Hey, it's Dr. John Terry, the Black Belt Leader, and welcome to the Black Belt Leadership Podcast, where each week I'm giving you tips, tools, insights, and resources to help you become a better version of who you are and what you do as you discover, develop, and deploy your own Black Belt Leader within. This week, I want to talk about responding to failure. You know, I've had the opportunity over the last 12 weeks, sorry, the last eight weeks to travel to 12 cities coast to coast to have an opportunity to showcase my newest book, Black Belt Secrets of Success. As I've had an opportunity to attend a number of conferences and challenging those in the room to summit their own Mount Everest of success, the conversation often turned to how do I respond to failure? Because as you're climbing the mountain of success, there's going to be setbacks. There's going to be obstacles. There's going to be times when you're not going to be able to make the next step forward that you need to. So when failure happens, and we know it does, how do you respond to failure? But when it comes to failure, here's something I can tell you. You and I, we all experience failure. Some of us experience failure more often than other people. Now, by definition, failure is the lack of success or the inability to achieve a goal, an objective, or an expectation. Simply put, failure is aiming at a target and missing the mark. Now, for all of us, life happens, and sometimes it doesn't always play out in our favor. Other times, somebody else gets the win. You apply for a position and you don't get the job. You hope for the promotion and it goes to someone else. The business you opened up that you envisioned was going to make you rich all of a sudden goes bankrupt and you got to close the doors. You try out to make the team and you didn't make the cut. Your best client leaves you for the competition. These things happen. And as a result of that, what I would say is welcome to life. Life has a number of twists and turns and potholes and detours and roadblocks that sometimes pop up and obscure our way as we're moving forward. Essentially, sometimes you win, sometimes you fail. Sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. But guess what? Even though you may have failed today, last week, last month, or maybe you failed a series of times, you're not the only one who's ever experienced failure. If you take a deep dive back through history, here's what you're going to find. Even some of the most successful people throughout recorded history have all experienced more than their fair share of failure. You know, I talk often about Thomas Edison, one of my heroes, and Thomas Edison, by some accounts, failed 10,000 times before he succeeded in creating the incandescent light bulb. Henry Ford's first two automobile companies failed miserably before he refined the Model T and founded the company that today bears his name. Michael Jordan, the NBA great, was cut from his high school varsity team his sophomore year, but went on to rebound and become one of the greatest players ever to play the game of basketball. Stephen Jobs was fired from the company Apple that he founded. He went on to found Next and Pixar and ultimately was wooed back to Apple 12 years later to revisit his position as the CEO. John Grisham, New York Times best-selling author, when he authored his first book, A Time to Kill, 28 publishers said no. Steven Spielberg, the amazing producer, was denied the opportunity to go to film school on three separate occasions. You know, at times we all get knocked to our knees and sometimes we end up being laid out on the canvas in the fight for success in life. At some point, it happens to all of us. But the question we all have to answer is whether or not we're going to get up or we're simply just going to stay there on our knee or laid out on our back and let the referee count us out. Now, in my book, The Black Belt Secrets of Success, I share 11 success principles that some of the most successful people throughout time have embraced on their journey from failure to triumph. One of the success principles I share in the book, I learned from a story I heard from Ryan Leake, the man who wrote the book, Embracing Failure. I'm sorry, Chasing Failure. Here's what he says. If you can't stomach failure, you're never really going to know success. Now, I want you to think about that. If you can't stomach failure, you're never really going to know success. I'm going to build on that in a minute, but I want you to let that just dwell in your thoughts for a moment. But in the interim, let me give you a newsflash. When it comes to failure, you've been failing since you were born. 
And you may say, John, what in the world are you talking about? What do you mean I've been failing since I was born? I've been very successful in whatever it is I do. Well, think about it for a minute. Did you come out of the womb and immediately set up or immediately start crawling? No, you didn't. Did you come out of the womb and immediately stand up, start walking, start talking, dress yourself, feed yourself, tie your own shoes, and get in a car and drive yourself to work? Well, of course you didn't. You had to learn through trial and error how to do these things. And I promise you, you failed miserably the first two times you tried to do it. No baby sets up perfectly the first time. No baby crawls perfectly the first time. No baby walks perfectly the first time. And you were no different than anyone else. You've been failing since you were born. You know, Albert Einstein famously said, failure is success in progress. So if you can't stomach failure, you will never really know success. Now, I've helped raise six amazing children. Each one of my kids is unique in his or her own way. But not a single one of them made it to where they are today without experiencing trial and error, without going through their fair share of stumbling along the way and experiencing failure at some point in their lives, and in fact, many points in their lives. Each failure they experienced brought a lesson that as they learned it, helped each of my children learn, grow, mature, and become a better version of who they've ultimately become today. For example, my youngest son, Joshua, was named the Outstanding Youth Martial Artist of the Year in 2010 by the United States Martial Arts Hall of Fame. He had just finished his third year as the number one forms and fighting and weapons competitor in a four-state circuit that he and I traveled together. But I can tell you this, the first time Joshua put on his gi and started training in martial arts, it was a trial and error experience for several months and several years. He had to learn the basics. He had to learn stances. He had to learn punches. He had to learn blocks and kicks and how to put all of those things together. And through trial and error and constant correction by his instructors, he began to hone his skill. Now, what's interesting is it was through failure, it was through learning what didn't work that Joshua discovered and ultimately honed what did work and made him a very successful competitor when he walked onto the floor to compete. I will say that his instructors were relentless. They praised his successes, but at the same time, they admonished his failures, constantly challenging him to up-level his game every single time he walked into class. His instructors constantly reminded him that failure and success are momentary. Each one of those happens, and it is a moment in time. But both failure and success teach a lesson that, if learned, would help Joshua and would help you and I on our relentless quest for excellence in our lives, whether we're competing or whether we're just living life in some way. But here's what I want you to understand. Lessons unlearned especially from failure, are doomed to be repeated. Life has got a series of lessons it wants to teach us, and here's what I can promise you. If you don't learn the lessons life is going to teach you, you're going to get to go back to class again and again and again until you do. Now, the yin-yang is a Chinese concept. It's a symbol that maybe you've seen it. It's dark on one side. I don't it looks like two teardrops, one set on top of the other, one up and one down, one with a black side with a white dot, the other white with a black dot. Now, that yin-yang symbol represents two opposite but complementary forces. That yin-yang symbol serves as a reminder that in life, some things can't exist without the other. I mean, think about it. You can't have light without darkness. You can't have strength without weakness. You can't have heat without cold. You can't have success without failure. Each opposite defines its counterpart as the antithesis of the other. But within each opposing force, there's an element of the other opposite but complementary force. Think about it this way. In our failure, there's an element of success waiting to be discovered. Had we done something differently, the outcome could have changed in our favor and we would experience success and not failure. By the same token, in our successes, there also exists an element of failure. Had we not done certain things a certain way, the outcome for us 
might have been much different. And in that moment, success may have become failure. So the challenge for each and every one of us is to see and seek the element of success that is hiding in failure, discovering a new and different way to do things to create a better outcome. It's also important as we are succeeding to be aware that lurking inside that success, there is an element of failure lurking there, wanting to trip us up, drop us to our knees or knock us down on the mat. So how should you and I respond to failure? Let's spend a few minutes talking about that. I believe there are four R's that allow us to learn the lesson that failure and success are both trying to teach us. When you and I can learn to identify, embrace, and implement these four R's in our life, we have a formula to keep learning, growing, improving, and moving forward. And ultimately, experiencing more success in our lives. So what are these four R's? Let me give them to you. Number one, reflect. Number two, renew. Number three, recommit. And number four, re-engage. Let me give them to you again. Reflect, renew, recommit, and re-engage. So let's break those down and spend just a minute talking about each of those four points in responding to failure. First, we reflect. We identify what happened and more importantly, why what happened occurred. Because until we understand what went wrong or what went right, we don't know what we need to do differently or what we need to repeat to create a similar or a better outcome. Until we know the underlying why of what happened, we don't know if failure was self-inflicted or if it was a cause outside of something that we could control. Secondly, we have to renew. Having identified what happened and why, now you and I have information available to us that we didn't have before. We can use that information to find a way forward, turning failure into success or turning success into more success. We know if we do the same thing the same way, we're going to get the same outcome. And if we repeat the same mistakes over and over again, we're going to continue to experience failure after failure after failure. But we know if we repeat the same things that lead to success, we're going to get more success. And if we build on that, the level of success that we experience can expand. With new information that's available to us every time we succeed or every time we fail, we can always go back and evaluate new ways of attempting something in a way that can create a new and a better outcome that we ultimately desire. Now, the third R is to recommit because sometimes after we fail, we're a bit hesitant to climb back into the ring and go at it again. We messed up. We made a mistake. We're feeling guilty. We're feeling angry. We're feeling frustrated. We're fearful. We have all these emotions going on inside of us. And sometimes after we fail, we don't want to go back and try again because we're afraid we're going to fail one more time. But sometimes, even when we succeed, we begin to question whether or not we succeeded by accident or if we really did something that we can repeat. And sometimes after success, we want to stop and relish in that success and stop moving forward. We begin to question whether or not we can actually pull off success again. As a result of that, we've got to recommit to keep moving forward. Because here's why. If we know what didn't work and we identify why it didn't work, we now have new information that we can use. We can now put all that together to create a catalyst to identify a new way forward that allows us to get back on our feet, get back in the ring, keep fighting the good fight of success and make the right choice to try one more time. That's what it means to recommit, to recommit to moving forward, to experiencing more success in our lives. Now, the fourth and final step in this 4 R process is to re-engage. That simply means after you've got back in the ring, you wipe off your gloves, you get back into the fight, and you get ready to go another round. Let me share a story with you of what I mean by having an opportunity to re-engage. Yeah, I was recently attending an MMA event in Northwest Arkansas, and I watched as two young men were banging away in the cage. 
It was a mixed martial arts event, and these two young men were just wailing on each other. One young man in particular had the advantage in this particular fight. He had rocked the other fighter several times during the round. One standing eight count had already been administered. The other fighter was in trouble, and he knew it. And as the round continued, it became obvious that one fighter was definitely better prepared than the other. The young man knew he was in trouble and was simply trying to survive the round. The bell rang and he goes back to his corner and he sits down with his coach and they had an opportunity at that moment to make a difficult decision. Does he get up off of the stool and does he respond to the bell and walk out and fight another round or does he give up? It was time in that one minute segment to reflect, to renew, to recommit, to re-engage or simply quit. Well, here's what I came to tell you. The young man came out of his corner at the bell and he re-engaged with his opponent. About a minute into the round, this young man who had been losing the fight out of nowhere threw this incredible spinning back kick and he struck his opponent squarely on the jaw. Like a tree that had been felled by an ax, this young man who had been dominantly winning for the first couple of rounds stiffened and fell to the floor unconscious. He hit the ground, he laid there a few moments, and he opened his eyes and he looked up and he said, what happened? The referee had already waved off the bout and this young man who had been losing this bout for two rounds had now had his hands raised in victory. That is an example of what can happen when you have the opportunity to go through the four R's, to reflect, to renew, to recommit, and most importantly, to re-engage. So let me bring this one home as we wrap up today's lesson. If you want to be successful in life, you're going to experience some failure along the way. Just accept that. Remember, Einstein said it well, failure is success in progress. Each day, you're going to learn some things that work, improve in those areas. Each day, you're going to experience some failure. Learn the lesson failure's trying to teach you apply it to your life, and move forward. But understand this, both failure and success are a moment in time. Let me explain what I mean. If I go out and run a 100-yard dash today, and I'm the first one to cross the finish line, I'm successful. I won the race. But tomorrow, if I want to be successful, I can't look back at what I did yesterday and say, I was successful yesterday. If I want to be successful today, what do I have to do? I have to show up, I have to get in the blocks, wait for the starter to fire the gun, and I have to run another 100-yard dash and be the first one to cross the finish line. Now, the same token is true if I run the race yesterday, but I didn't finish first. Guess what? I didn't win today. I wasn't successful, but that doesn't mean I can't go out tomorrow and run the race again and have another opportunity to compete for the prize. All too often, we allow failure, which is a moment in time, to define us when we simply stop moving forward and we give up trying. Failure only defines you when you quit. Failure only defines you when you get rocked, you take a knee, or you end up being knocked out on the canvas and you choose not to get up before the referee finishes his 10 count. Failure only defines you when you get knocked to the canvas and you choose to lay there and let the ref wave his hands and the fight is over because you chose not to re-engage. So let me leave it with this. With each failure and with each success, respond using the four R's. Reflect on what happened and why. Renew and find a way forward. Recommit to make the right choice re-engage by getting back in the game. The only way to win, to be successful in life, is to compete in the game of life. And the only way to keep winning, the only way to continue to be more successful is to keep competing in the game of life at an ever higher level of competition. Remember, failure only defines you when you quit. Otherwise, failure is a moment in time and you can respond to failure by moving forward. Og Mandino, in his classic work, The Greatest Salesman in the World, records 
a number of scrolls that made an individual the greatest salesman in the world. One of those scrolls says this, I will persist until I succeed. Successful people understand that. And successful people respond to failure by persisting until they succeed. They practice the four R's. They reflect, they renew, they recommit, and they re-engage because they don't want to mindlessly repeat the same failed strategies and tactics that aren't moving them forward. Remember, successful people do daily what unsuccessful people do sometimes or not at all. Successful people understand this. Failure is success in progress. And successful people intentionally choose to keep progressing, to keep moving forward, to learn the lessons life is trying to teach them and apply those to their lives so they can keep learning, growing, maturing, expanding, and becoming a better version of who they are and what they do. Remember the four R's. Reflect, renew, recommit, and re-engage. Let me leave you with this thought. Success awaits so keep persisting until you succeed. I'm Dr. John Terry, the Black Belt Leader. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day.